Hey guys, it's me Courtney and today I am removing these unicorn nails that I put on my client Rachel a few weeks ago. I really didn't want to file off that unicorn. It took me absolutely ages to paint it. I hate filing off designs that take a long time. But here we are. I'm using my e-file because it's super quick and Rachel has a thin layer of builder in a bottle on her nails underneath of the polish. So it's completely safe for me to file off the gel polish and just leave the builder in a bottle intact. Sometimes I will put a thicker layer of base coat, of a rubber base coat, on. Oh, here I am filing off that other unicorn. Ah. So sometimes I'll put a thicker layer of um, rubber base coat on if they're not having builder in a bottle because I don't really like to soak off gel polish it takes absolutely ages and it's annoying it's much easier to just file it off so if you put a really thick layer of base coat on then you can go ahead and just file off down to the base coat and you can soak the base coat off if you want it only takes 30 seconds or so for the acetone to penetrate the base coat and then it comes off dead easy so that's done now we're going along and pushing back her cuticles she doesn't normally have very much cuticle growth because she has regular manicures but it is winter and everybody's cuticles seem to be a little bit thicker in the winter time. So that nail, that thumbnail didn't have any builder in a bottle on it because she had an accident and it came off. I'm using my little diamond cuticle bit here just going along and removing anything that didn't come up with my um, cuticle pusher. I don't spend a lot of time with the cuticle pusher trying to scrape it off because I'm going to do this. I really just push it back and make space for the drill bit to get in so that I can use that to get the cuticles off instead. Okay, here we go. I'm wiping with acetone. You can use isopropyl alcohol for this as well, but I use acetone for everything. So I just make sure I get the whole nail in the sidewalls and the cuticle and then she's all clean and ready to go. I'm going straight in with my rubber base coat. I decided this time that I wasn't going to put a layer of builder in a bottle on her nails because she has really strong nails and to me it's just a waste of money for her and a waste of time for me. So we're just doing a rubber base coat and see how she gets along with that. I'm sure she'll be fine because her nails are beautiful and super strong anyway. Even the one that she had, um, that the builder in a bottle had come off of her thumbnail, she didn't even break that one. So I'm pretty confident that a good layer of rubber base coat will be enough. It was very cold when I was doing this. My rubber base coat was thicker than I wanted it to be. But that gets cured for 60 seconds. If you have clients that have sensitive nails, sometimes with a rubber base coat or rubber top coat, you do need to use the low heat mode. But Rachel doesn't seem to be affected by that. As I said, her nails are really good, so she's not dead sensitive. So I just put her on full heat for 60 seconds. So I really work the base coat into the nail. I don't float it over top. I try and really scrub it into the nail, and make sure that every little nook and cranny is covered. Okay. So the design that Rachel picked, she sent me about a thousand pictures as usual. And we decided to do a mixture of all of them. But they're all going to get this blue background. I used this blue last time when I did my Christmas bows nail art design and I really really love it. It's the perfect winter blue. It's from Blue Sky. I don't remember what number it is but I'll find out and put it in the description box. So you could probably get away with one coat of this but that just feels wrong. I don't like to do one coat of anything. I'll always do two coats and cap all of the free edges. 
So you can see that I'm angling the finger down. I like to point the finger down so that I can see the cuticle and see how close I am. If the finger is straight or pointing up towards me, I can't really see the cuticle. Uh, so I point it down and push that polish up into it. Sometimes I get too close and I touch the cuticle. And in that case, I just wipe off the whole nail and start again. I don't have time to be wiping it away with a little brush and things like that. So I just wipe it off and start again. But most of the time I'm pretty good. I just push it up and just really watch the little blob of gel polish and see what it's doing and how it's reacting to, to how you're pushing it. I love painting Rachel's nails. I've been doing her nails for, well, a long time. She was my client in Cat Trick when I lived there. And then both of our husbands are in the army, so we both got sent away to other places, and now we've ended up at the same place again in Lynham. So it was really exciting to meet up with her again and to be able to do her nails. I know a lot of my clients from Cat Trick would really love that opportunity. But for Rachel, she's actually got to experience it. So we're doing the second layer now. I don't really put a lot of focus into the second layer. Not as much as the first, because the first layer light, like lays the groundwork. And so when you put the second layer on, it knows where to go. Because the first layer is already there. And it's a lot easier to guide the polish. I think I've capped every nail so far. That's like a record for me. I try to cap all the nails, all the free edges, but sometimes I forget. It doesn't really cause me a lot of problems, but you can tell when you look at the end of the nail that it hasn't been capped. So if I do all 10 of these nails and cap every free edge, I'm gonna be quite proud of myself. Yep, one more to go. Am I going to do it? I forget. Yep, well done me. Okay, so now all of these designs that we're doing, I've never done any of them before. So I just kind of look at the picture and decide what needs to go on first. So the polar bear on the pinky fingernails is really easy. He's just white and he has black eyes and a black nose. So I'm doing the white bit first. I'm using my medium detail brush. You'll find a link to that in the description. He's getting some little ears. And of course, when you're layering colors, like next I'll put his little black nose and his black eyes on, you need to cure all your colors in between. So I did film both hands on this video, which is different to the other Watch Me Work videos that I did, but I thought these are really cool designs and it might help to see them done twice. So there's this little ear. For the white, I'm using my white painting gel from Lisa Con. It's really, really thick and highly pigmented. Uh, so it's dead easy to get crisp lines. I would have struggled a little bit. It would have looked different if I used my white gel polish, though it is a good gel polish that I have for the white. I use Canny. Um, it would have looked different and probably the edges wouldn't have been so crisp or it would have been a little bit too thick. So I'm doing two layers, but the second layer is just really thin. And I'm just covering up any imperfections that we have. I'm waiting for the light to turn off so that she can switch hands, but I'm getting my black ready so that I can do the other side. Well, I can do the black when it's time to do the black. I still have to do the imperfections and... You know, that ear probably I didn't like how small it was, so I made it a little bit bigger. And just doing the side edge there, make sure that everything is covered. Sometimes when you use a really thick white painting gel, it looks a little bit uneven anyway. Like some bits are a bit more raised than others, but once you put a top coat on, it's it all levels out, so I don't worry too much about that. Okay, so I'm using my dotting tool to put the eyes and the little nose on. How cute is he? I'm 
Okay, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm adding some snow. Just using my super fine dotting tool in the same white painting gel. Put in some little dots on so that it looks like snow. Oh, the video has gone all weird on my end. I hope it doesn't show up like this when I upload it on YouTube. So there's the little black nose. You'll notice that I use my thumb as a palette. This is a great trick. I don't know where I picked it up. I think I just got pissed off with having to keep going back to the pot of colors. So I just put a little bit on my thumb. I check that the dots are the size that I want. And then I can go straight in on the nail without fearing that it's going to be too big. Okay, so that's the polar bear done. Next, what are we doing? It's the penguin. I haven't done a penguin. I have done a penguin in 2015. But that was four years ago. So this, and it was different, I think. He was, the whole nail was that penguin. And he didn't have a hat on. So when we did the unicorn nails on Rachel last time, she wanted her unicorn to have a Santa's hat. And unfortunately... Her nail was just a little bit too small and I couldn't fit the Santa hat onto the unicorn. So I promised her that we would fit the hat onto the penguins. So I'm making this little black body. That's going to get cured. And I will do the same on the other hand. I'm not doing the going in the pattern of like pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger because the middle two fingers have a very similar design in which it's like a house and a snowman and they're getting a white ombre as well. So I'm doing the pinky and the index finger first because they're both the same theme with like the polar bear and the penguin in the corner and then some snow falling. So I do two layers of the black. Again, I probably could have done just one, but I wanted it to be absolutely perfect. So I did two. <clears throat> so we're just waiting for that other one to cure, and I decided I'll go ahead and do the red hat and try not to touch the black bit that I just painted. Um, the black is quite pigmented and it takes two minutes to cure. So you can see I popped that hand on for another minute. Here we go. I should have done the red first in hindsight and I did think this while I was painting it but at that point it was too late. So when I'm painting on the red I'm just being super careful not to touch the black. This red is from Blue Sky. I think this is the one that I have on my nails at the minute and in this video. It's kind of like a blood red. I really like it. So once the hat's done, then it gets a little white pom-pom and then some more pom-poms. This can be a little bit messy because pom-poms aren't exactly the neatest things. So that's this little hat that I promised I would give her. And now I need to do his white belly. You can see how good this white is. It covers that black beautifully. And then, yeah, make sure that I get the free edge there so that when you see the end of it, it doesn't look naff. And then he gets the same. You could use the dotting tool for this as well. But since I had my brush in my hand, I just used that. And then a little line at the bottom. Do his little belly. I love this penguin. I did him on another girl the next day. She loved this set so much that she wanted something similar, but her nails were tiny, the tiniest things in the world, so she didn't get um, as much detail. Here we go. He's going to get some eyes now. Again, I'll do the white part of his eyes, and then I'll need to cure it before I can do the black parts. So we're just waiting... I think the worst part is waiting for the nails to finish curing so that you can switch hands. You don't, you don't want to under cure it, especially if you've taken all the time to do crazy designs. If you under cure it and it comes off, it's going to cause you problems. So I'm using a super tiny dotting tool 
now to put his eyes on. I tried to get him looking one way and the other one looking the other way. So I'm using a little bit of orange now for the beak. I called it a nose when I was talking to her. She made fun of me. So I put a little dot on with a dotting tool and then I used a really fine brush, probably my striping brush, just to drag it out into a point over top of his little fat belly. You can see me do that again. So here's the other guy. He's looking the other way. And then put a little dot of orange. And then use my really fine brush just to drag it down. Okay, so the middle two are like a wintry scene. So I'm using my sponge and the white painting gel from Lisa Con. And I'm just, I don't know, stamping it with my sponge to ombre it halfway up the nail so that it looks like winter. You really don't need very much gel on your sponge to do this. If you use too much then it won't blend properly. I like doing an ombre like this. I did some baby boomers yesterday I think and I used this technique as well on those. And again, don't worry about any really minor imperfections. So I'm using the side of my sponge there, did you see that? Because it has no gel on it. And if the, the line is too defined, then I'll use the side of my sponge where there's no gel just to soften that blend even more. Like that. Cool. Okay. What are we doing next? Is it the house? No. Oh, I'm doing snow on the bottom. You see I'm using my thumb again because I had too much paint on my brush. So I just removed some of it onto my thumb. Dead easy, dead quick. It's right there. You just need to be careful when you're switching fingers that you don't touch the underside of the client's hand with your nail because you'll get polish on them. So that's going to be the ground. I'm just stealing some polish from that other side. I must have had way too much over there. This part doesn't need to be dead precise because it's snow and snow lays however it wants to lay. So I didn't really worry about making like a super straight line or a French manicure line or Anything, I just blobbed it on and worked it all the way across. In fact, I probably tried to make it look a little bit messy. Okay, now what? So I've got a little palette on the side that has some colors on it. I'm doing a snowman on this nail. And we had a little laugh because in the UK, um, snowmans only ever seem to have two balls, which I find very strange because in Canada, where I come from, our snowmen have three balls. But every time I've seen somebody make a snowman here in England, it's always got two balls. So she was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm making a snowman. He's got three balls. So there he is. I'm just making sure that they're all symmetrical and everything's covered and he's actually sitting on the snow. I used my dotting tool to get the circles, but now I'm using my brush just to clean up the edges and make it bigger if I want to. And there's going to be a tree as well. So for the tree I'm using a really dark green gel polish from Canny. And I'm not putting a lot of thought into it, I'm just putting it on in a tree shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. But that's sitting on top of the snow as well, giving it a little jaggy edge and making sure that I go all the way to the side wall so that it covers the whole side of the nail. Oh, I'm using my brush. Did I use my brush for the last one? I might have. I don't remember. I've done a lot of Christmas nails this week. I need to do my own nails, but
but I don't know if I can be asked. They're still like they are in this video. They're still red with snowflakes um, that I did for our Christmas mess do at my husband's work. But they definitely need to be top coated because I filed them while I was doing other people's nails. So I'll probably just re-top coat my nails because I don't think I can be bothered to do my nails after doing the world on everybody else's. So here's the other tree. You can see that I've kind of mirrored the nails, the trees on the on the inside of the nail on both nails. So now I'm using a little bit of white and just going along on the tree on the bottom of each kind of layer and putting a little bit of white so that it looks like snow. You don't want too much. I was trying to make my brush strokes like visible so that it wasn't just blobs of white. So now I'm putting a little black hat on him, which was very difficult. I couldn't decide what tool to use. Now he gets eyes, which are absolutely tiny. When you see pictures of nails with nail art, unless you're a nail tech, I don't think you can fully appreciate how tiny the details actually are, especially on Rachel's nails, because these are her natural nails and they're not long even by a stretch of the imagination. So it was really hard to get the fine details in, but we managed and I was super happy with how they turned out. So he gets some eyes as well and some buttons down his chest. And I need to give him a smile Oh, here I go with the snow again. Just abstractly throwing it on there, like... Don't put too much thought into it. Oh, must have hit the camera with my head. What's that? Was that his nose? Yeah, so I put a little blob of orange on for his nose. But then I didn't drag this one out into a line. So he has a... An orange nose, like a Satsuma nose. And this guy, here we go, I'm putting some arms on him just with a brown gel polish. And then I need to put a nose on him too. Oh bloody hell, Courtney, what are you doing? Sort your life out. Oh, I didn't put a nose on him yet. Okay, so this nail is going to be a little house. I've never done a house before and I didn't have the picture. It looks nothing like the picture that she showed me. We looked at it afterwards and I went, oh, well, <laughs> my house is completely different. But she says my house is better because it has windows. Although the windows were really hard. So I'm just doing the square for like the main body of the house and it's sitting on top of the snow. And then I'm going to give it a little square or a little triangle roof. I'm doing that in brown too. And then before I do anything to the house, I need to cure that so that nothing bleeds into each other and everything gets really crisp lines. I wonder when I'm going to put the nose on that snowman. Because I know he does have a nose. Hmm. Wait and see. Unless I already have. I don't think I have. Okay, there's the little roof. That's going in to get cured as well. Now, I need to outline this house. Oh, I'm going to do the door first. I decided to do the doors and the windows in white so that it really showed up. Otherwise, it would kind of blend in. These windows are so tiny. And they even have crosses in the middle. If you zoom into the pictures, they don't look dead crisp or anything. They're kind of a bit messy, but hey man, I'm, I don't have very good eyesight. Which is unfortunate for a nail tech, but it's true. So I did that, and I need to outline the whole thing in brown. I wish I had a thicker brown 
gel polish but the one that I have is from Essential Nails and it's not particularly good for doing art but it's the only one I have so that's what I'm doing I'm just putting a little bit of brown on the door as well and now I'm using black I think for the chimney that's a cute little house here's some smoke coming out of the chimney Oh yeah, you get to do it again. <laughs> I always say when I'm doing nails and I do one hand and it's like super intricate design and you, you finish the nail and you think, yes, I'm done. And then they present you with their other hand. And I always think, damn it, I have to do that again. So here we go. Outlining the whole thing in brown. And then doing the door. And the windows. If you haven't got yourself a good striping brush yet, you should check this one out because it's super cheap. It's like two pound or something stupid like that. And honestly, it is the best striping brush I've ever tried. I bought several of them because I'm, I'm not a very, I'm very careless with my brushes. I don't take care of them. I'll leave them in the sun with gel polish on them. So if I find something I like, I tend to buy a lot of them. Just in case, because I know myself. Okay, what are we doing now? I'm going to put some snow on the house because it just looked like it was lacking something. And I didn't have a picture for reference. So I'm just going off the top of my head here. So he's getting a little bit of snow. What am I doing with this black? Oh, I'm outlining random parts of the white with black don't know why highlights low lights you know all right throw it in there let's do that again put some snow on the roof again i'm not putting too much thought into this i'm just whacking it on there it looks like snow snow is abstract and then throwing a little bit of black in there here and there Oh, and then I decided I'll put a little wreath on the doors. So I literally just blobbed a piece of green, a green circle on the door. Because it's so tiny, there's no way I could have done any kind of detail. Oh, here we go. I'm putting some snow on everything. I decided last minute that everybody needed snow. Not just the polar bear. So everybody gets a little bit of snow. And everybody on this hand gets a little bit of snow as well. Have I noticed he has no nose yet? I don't think I have. Maybe I've already done it. I don't know. Here we go. Everybody's got snow. I think the houses are done. Yeah, they must be because we're doing the thumbs now. So normally I do bobbles in a circle. But I've seen a couple of people do this shape of bubble and I really liked it, but I didn't have a picture to look at. So I did the shape that I kind of remembered seeing. And then it got some white lines on it afterwards. But I'll tell you, I wasn't entirely happy with them. They look nice and they're fine, but it wasn't what I had envisioned. So the next time I do this bubble, I'm going to actually look at a picture of how I want it so that I have my vision fulfilled. I like this silver. It's Millennium. I got it from Essential Nails. I use it quite often. It's easier than using a silver glitter because that shit gets everywhere. Okay, so I'm outlining the whole thing in white, which 
I don't think I needed to do. That's probably where I went wrong here. Like I said, it's fine. It's, it's a really nice bobble. It's just not what I envisioned. And then for the stripes across it, I just kind of went over like that. And what I should have done is like come down on the finishing stroke. Do you know what I mean? You've probably seen these bubbles and you can see where I've gone wrong. But I'm, it's a bubble. It's a thumbs anyway. Nobody cares about the thumbs. I always say the thumbs are like the ginger stepkids nobody ever wanted. Here we go again. Outline. Oh, if I could go back in time, how I would do things differently. And I've thought about this off and on since Rachel left. It never leaves you. If you do something that you're unhappy with on somebody's nails, you'll remember it forever. Okay. So we're nearly done here. I just need to do like the, um, the little bit at the top of the bobble that gets... Oh look, I got polish on her finger. The little top at the bob of the bobble where the string sits. So I think I did that in black. I think, yeah, I tried it in black and then decided no, I didn't like that. It looks stupid. We're going to do it in white. Yeah, that looks better. Now it kind of looks like, um, like a Christmas light bobble. Here I am desperately trying to make it look better by putting some dots on it and some snow because the other ones have snow. And then the tiniest line at the top for the string. Here we go, same again. I'm using my striping brush there, but I didn't actually want to use my striping brush. I wanted to use a thicker one. <clears throat> wow, that's a long video. Hope you guys are still here. Well done if you are. So there's the little dots. And I put one at the bottom as well, just to kind of finish it off. And then it gets snow. Am I going to go back and do that snowman's nose? No. I must have already done it. I can't really see in the editing app that I'm on right now doing this voiceover. I have a very small picture. So I can't really see. But here we go, put the top coat on. I love top coat. It just makes everything so finished and any kind of tiny imperfections that you have will be blended together. I love top coat. I wish I had a great big thing of it. I know Miss You sell a great big like 500 mil refill top coat, which I think is a fantastic idea, but I don't have that kind of money. But I wish I did, I would buy that. And I would just use top coat for no reason. So everybody's getting one layer of top coat. And then they get cured for 60 seconds as well. We were really, really happy with these nails. And they took me an hour and 40 minutes. Which I think is a pretty good time considering... That every nail has got a design. Oh, there's a piece of fluff or a piece of hair or something on that. Damn it. Yep, still there. Yeah, totally out of frame. Sorry, but just applying top coat. Nothing special. Okay, then everything's top coated. I put the oil on. I do this the same every time. I only put oil right into the cuticle. I try not to get any on the nail. And I try not to get any on the skin. It's literally just falling into the crevice of the cuticles and the sidewall. He was dancing. So that you don't ruin the the gel polish. And you don't have a an oily picture. So I'm just rubbing it off 
of the skin, trying to keep it inside the cuticle, but not have it on the finger or on the nail. Okay, so that video ended more abrupt than I thought. Here's the finished nails. I hope you like them, and I hope you learned something. Give me a comment if you're still watching this video right to the very end. You are a trooper. See you next time.